We have the shim that we took out of the uh, pinion, yep. which is roughly the right size to use here. So we take so half a mil off that and replace and, it on the other side. And we know that our preload here, uh, the, the, the combination of this spacer and this spacer is correct. Is to a good give preload, yeah. The right preload for this bearing assembly here. So if we take half a mil off there and replace it with half a mil spacer here, that will move the uh, ring gear away from the pinion and then we can um, check it. Because at the moment, um, as soon as we get the, these two bearings seated, the whole gear binds up uh, on, the, uh, on the root, so it's bottoming out inside the root here. It's two mils between the cap screw and the side of the case. Yeah, that's it. So right there, if you can see. Between the end of this cap screw here and the side of the casing in there. Yep. So the only other option is to change the bearing there and hopefully it's a different distance, but this is much easier and it's reversible. Yep. So we grind that down, swap that to there. If it doesn't help, we can easily put that back with the shim on this yeah. side. And then absolute worst case is we can grind where the, the bearing sits on the pinion. Yeah, if we really have to sink the pinion more, um, then we can remove some material off the um, the, the, f the abutment face where the bearing sits up against yeah. to move the whole pinion back. But we really don't want to do that because that was a real tight fit. Yeah. And so it's a lot of work. It, it really depends how the contact patches um, appear on the on the gear. Yeah. But so you can see we got some paint on there. We did a rough, a rough look before, um, which confirmed our thoughts. Um, so at, at the moment, that's the easiest way to uh, achieve what we uh, we'll experiment so we can get at least get the whole gear set to bolt up properly and um, get a decent then pattern check it happening properly. on there. Yeah. All right, we're getting good at putting this in and out. All right guys, so this is a surface grinder. So we're gonna knock half a mil off this. guys so surprise surprise it is now day two uh, the last footage you saw was in the same day about five six hours ago um, thank you very much Ben I very much appreciate it but where are we at do you want to give us a, a rundown okay so um, we're Actually, let's, look at, let's, let's look at this work of art first so we just knocked up a um, little pulley uh, to go on the back of the crankshaft uh, flange and this is to check the preload on the pinion bearings. So what we'll do is uh, you may you remember this may You may remember <laughs> oh, I could eat to sleep um, You may remember this rope from such episodes as checking the other bearing preload on the diff carrier. So we have it back again and um, And what we're gonna do is wrap that around this pulley like so and do the same thing with the um, with the pulls with the scales so we're going to pull on it with the scales measure the um, measure the load as it uh, unwinds and then we'll work out the diameter and so on and then we'll know the um, the rolling friction yep to set the preload so what happens is you have a collapsible spacer in here um, and the, the inner race of the bearing sits up against the collapsible spacer on the back side you have a nut and you do up the nut slowly bit by bit and the preload will increase um, and therefore increasing the pull or the force needed to turn the um, pulley. So we'll sneak up on the right setting slowly. Um, before that we do that though we have to install the race in the housing, yep. um, lubricate the seal and so on and put all that in. Yeah. So, all right, so this morning we mocked it up um, and we're pretty happy with everything so now we're going to be installing the pinion for good. So Ben's just knocking the outboard bearing race in with his fancy bearing knocking kit. Is that the technical word for it? Bearing install kit. Almost. Uh, two from three, not too bad. <laughs> but what size is it? Uh, that looks like it's about 60 mil. <laughs> Plenty of room to 
swing, mate. Oh. Don't break that torch again. Again? He literally fixed that at the dinner table last night. Guys, say goodbye to this fella. It's the last time you'll see him. I should take a photo at the front. <clears throat> Photo shoot. Right. Always remember to put some oil in the cage and leave some for the diff. Okay, so what we have here is the bearing assembly as it would appear um, without the outer races on. So that's what we were calling the inboard bearing. It sits inboard right inside against the pinion. Um, and then the outer ring will sit against that here. Then we have uh, a step in the shaft, and this is the collapsible spacer that everyone talks about in yep. here, uh, and the inner race of the outboard bearing. So in the differential casing, there will also be an outer ring that sits here against the case, and what we do is we wind, or we put the, um, the tail shaft flange on, and then the nut, and we wind it up until we get a certain preload uh, figure. So what happens is, as we wind the nut up, it pushes this bearing um, in a race up against the outer race and starts to preload the whole assembly. The collapsible spacer provides the force that goes back this way against the um, against the inner ring and that holds it against the tail shaft coupling which acts as like a spacer and a seal wear ring and the retaining nut. So as we tighten up the nut slowly this will this um, inner race will go up against the outer race increasing the preload till we're at the right point. Very nice. It's there. It's not gonna stay. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Alright, so we've just used a series of spacers and then the nut to basically pull the pinion uh, outer bearing onto the, the pinion shaft to get that started. Now Ben's just putting the pinion flange on. Now that we've got the yeah, pinion drive shaft flange, now that we've got the, um, the splines hanging out enough to locate it. I was just going to pull it tighter with that. Very good, very impressed. Less impressed about the Ryobi failing. I know, that was going real well until the variable speed trigger decided to... Well the whole speed control thing. Yeah, everything. So the whole speed control thing on the not so trusty Ryobi seems to have packed it in. So there's only full speed on the trigger and the speed control at the top doesn't do anything. So previously it had three different sort of Maybe a, uh, another Benjineered video. Yeah, a trip to Bunnings, give me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> depends, Actually, how, yeah. depends how old it is. Uh, they'll, probably, they'll probably still be it. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's a bit of a shame. But. All right, so now the bearing is all seated. We can pull that back off and then put the seal in, is that right? That's right. Well, let's just pull that out there. Um, and the trick with cleaning any of this sort of sealing surfaces is to go in the direction of the seal lip. Yes, definitely. So you don't create any score marks. That's really um, nice. Axial score marks for um, the uh, oil to leak out. So just give it a light polish this way with like a maroon scotch brite and a bit of lubricant. So in this case, we'd just use 556, but you can use, um, you know, WD-40 or whatever you've got. Hand. Inox. Just inox. Kero? Yeah. Kero, just anything yeah. that helps, um, you know, carry away the debris. Yeah. And, all right, so seal time, using seal time. the old uh, Permatex former gasket number two. Non hardening former gasket. Yes. So what we're gonna do is put a thin smear around the outside. So seeing we've already sized up our um, pressing tool that we're gonna use to push this in. The other thing we're gonna do is grab some grease and put it on the lip surface. So it's all a bit, uh, these, these tubs of grease open themselves, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, so you want to make sure your gloves are pretty clean. That's just the black mark, it's not really dirt. 
um, and then we'll put in there. So you can see this is a double lip seal. So you've got one seal and lip and one's like a shield. So we want to fill that void between the two with grease. It all gets a little bit messy when you try to put it in, but this is the easiest way to do it. Once it's in there, there's not much room between the the lips and the shaft. And so does the grease help to seal it as well, uh, as well as aiding it going in cleanly? Yeah, it, stop, it helps to stop the um, lip tearing. Nobody likes a torn lip. Mm. So um, when, you, when you slide it in uh, over the shaft, that's part of the reason why we put the seal in afterwards as well, because the spline um, on the end of the shaft where the coupling goes to the tail shaft flange um, can tear up the lip and then you'll have a perpetual oil leak and you'll be back again to do this. Mm. And when you loosen that nut, you also release the preload on the pinion bearing. So it's very hard to get it back into the same spot unless you like accurately mark it and so on. Yeah. All right. Okay, so it's all looped up. Okay, so one of the things when you're using older parts is you need to inspect the parts really carefully to make sure that they're still okay and they haven't worn um, a funny pattern. So when parts are in service, they can wear in against each other um, and they'll, they'll cause no issues at all um, when they're there with the mating part. But when you put them against a new part, you can have issues. Um, so one of the things we noticed is this abutment face here on the flange, which goes against the bearing here, has actually worn a shoulder and a step into in the shaft there. So what that means is instead of having a nice flat parallel surface from here, there's a step and you can see that it's quite a substantial step in the shaft there. If you look at the bearing that's come out as well, you can see that by design there's a little step in here. Um, on the radius transition from the side face to the bore. So you can see that's there. And if we mate those two up, you'll see that it locates against each other in that step. The new bearing doesn't have that. Um, so what will happen is uh, when we bolt it up, depending on how big the radius is on the other bearing, this high spot that's remaining here will butt up against the bearing. Then what will invariably happen is that little step there will wear away and you'll lose your bearing preload and that's quite a substantial distance of preload that you'll lose. So you need to make sure all the parts are in good order. So what we'll do is we'll chuck this up, um, make sure we can grip onto it carefully and uh, properly, and if we can, we'll just clean that lip off it. Yep. Welcome back. <laughs> so we have cleaned up the face of the uh, pinion. Uh, turns out I don't think it was hardened at all, uh, which explains why it wore so easily. But anyway, it's nice and clean and square. Put a little bit of anti-seize on the on the uh, splines, in there, which makes it easy to get in and off. Uh, a light coat of grease on the seal running surface, uh, and we've prepared the nut as well with just a little bit of um, anti-seize just for this initial install part. This up, locate on the splines, and as we turn it in, we're just going to turn it until it seats. And install the nut. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, is wind the nut up until it just touches and the uh, pinion flange is just up against the bearing in a ring. A um, couple of notes about using the Ugga Dugga on this type of thing. Yes, you can brunel the bearings. Um, it's, a, it's called false brunelling and it's where the, um, the rollers, because they're um, sort of in a loose state at that point in time, uh, vibrate against the inner ring and cause like a um, surface defect or like a... Um, a wear mark in the in the inner in ring. So you can prevent that and some of the things you can do to prevent that is make sure the bearing has plenty of oil in it if you are going to go through with this type of um, install <laughs> technique. So uh, yes, according to the textbook it's not the way to do it. It does work though um, and the risk can be mitigated by preparing all the components appropriately before you launch it. So something to keep in mind if you want to go for this type of thing then uh, make sure the bearing has plenty of oil in it like a good quality oil that you're going to use in your diff uh, to prevent the, uh, the chance of having a false Brunel mark in the bearing when you finish your install. I thought I'd just head off the YouTube critics there. <laughs>
Do you want to play with it? Yeah. It does. Okay, just a fraction tighter. It's about one kilo. Yeah. According to that, it's 1.35 to 2.3. That's what you want. What's the verdict? She's apples. Was it two kilo? Uh, just over two. Yeah. So, so you want in between? Double, triple check. 1.35 and 2.2 I think it was. Yeah. Sounds about right. Pinion's done. Pinion's done. Check backlash of the Yeah, so we'll put the, the diff center, center back in. Um, check the diff center. All right. And we'll see if we can stake over that nut so it doesn't move and we'll put a paint mark on there so uh, we know if it's ever moved in service and we know how where to put it back to as well. Yep. So hopefully the last time the center is going back in. So we'll just torque that up and check the back way. All right, so we've got the axles back in, bolted in, um, calipers on, brakes on. Got the handbrake slightly on to put a bit of drag on the drivetrain. Now Ben has marked the teeth. Oh, they've already gone around, but he's marked them with some yellow paint. And he's just cranking this around. So you want to put a bit of load on the, the axles to make the gears mesh nice and tight, I guess. Is that what you'd say? Yeah, so um, it actually creates a nice, decent pattern on the teeth so you can see where they end up. Well, we're getting close. One more. Yep. Okay, look. So we're just looking at the um, the mark. It's not as clear as we'd like, but you can see it there. So it's right here. So in terms of um, the tip or the root, it's in the middle, fractionally towards the root. Um, so to raise the raise the uh, line up the teeth, normally you sh you sink the piston away, uh, the pinion away. Which so we're not doing. We're not doing that, but um, it's very close to the centre. As it runs in, the pinion will move away. Yep. Anyway, so that will come up, and then in terms of backlash, it's the um, beginning and end. So the end of the contact patch is down there, and the start is up here a little bit yep so um, potentially we could adjust that fractionally with the uh, backlash as well but it's not that far out that we need to worry about it yep all right send it Benny Do -do 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 -do. finally that's the oil we're running Penrite Pro Gear 80 W140 full synth. Test drive. First impressions. A lot better crawling. Yeah. You seem to crawl up that hill pretty easy. Yeah. I've still got to get used to how low I guess I can get the revs. Yeah. Something rattling around in there. Oh, you, did you tighten up your plastic, your metal shield? Shield. The two screws on the side of that metal under tray. Yeah, that's diff. Maybe, uh... So as you probably saw on that video, it was kind of cut short and it feels like something has given us a false positive when we we're getting the lash on this. Let me turn this light on. 
And it's now, what do you reckon, a bearing race or something? It's seated. Yeah, it looks like one of the Look bearing races. I don't know if you could hear in the video, but that's fucking loose now. And that was beautiful before. This rear one uh, most likely wasn't pressed in all the way when the, um, the preload was being set. So under load, it's moved. That's yeah, definitely, yeah. So we'll give it some, we'll pull it off, check it, put it back on, ugga dugga the fuck out of it and <laughs> finally go home. Get some sleep. Yeah, more than four hours. <laughs> All right guys, so we ended up just tightening up the pinion nut. What was it, like another full turn? No, it was about half a turn. Half a turn, oh 180, yeah. Um, so, so That's... far we chucked it on the hoist, we, uh, went into first gear, let it run, um, so far so good. Doing a three point turn in here, it was feeling normal. Um, so we'll go for a drive and yeah. hopefully this is it. of the rattling so we got this uni that's rattling so that should have no play should have been no no that's um, on its way to being well flogged yep well it has been well flogged <laughs> it's probably about 330,000 k's old to be honest 63 all right What was 86, a flex? So interestingly, it's here. Just before the cat, that's the hottest. Yeah. Restriction. Well, around. Oh, I suppose the cell. Yeah, yeah the catalyst. It's still radiating from there. Yeah. Everything gets there. Anyway, that's not what we're here to. No. So Ben's got his uh, Kevlar gloves. <laughs> so we're we going to. So, pop. Your rubbers. You. Your rubber's totally fucked. Hey, come over here, have a look at this. Can you see the tear? Look at that. That's how babies happen. <laughs> I should probably stop doing this because you want to drive it tomorrow, but... Oh, yeah, 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 I can, I can uh, see that. Hold on, let me see if I can... Months. See if I can zoom. Oh, I'll do it from my back. Okay, that doesn't help matters either. So that's torn. Yep. Okay, then, in here... See, that rubber's totally cooked as well, but separate issue from here to here. But you'll see, use this as a reference point so you can see how much play there is. And that could be because the bearings are all dry, yeah, because all the grease is dry, because particularly because it's right next to the exhaust, yeah. So, your standard uh, lithium based grease mineral oil that you run in these sort of joints, um, they really can only get their expected life up to about 80 degrees. Then after that, all the um, constituents of the base oil starts breaking down a okay. lot quicker. So one of the ways is oxidation and you know hardening and all the rest of it. But you, it runs right next to the exhaust. All right. So we can pull this CV joint apart, can't we? Well, not quite apart, but what we can do just take the cover off. Point is take these bolts out, which is see. The other thing is that rubber's not doing anything, so it's not sealing the water and crud. That's getting kicked up from the yep. road from getting into that joint. So, so we might see something quite scary inside. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll undo these cap screws here around there, and that's this cover, and we'll slide the cover back as far as we can and have a peer inside and All right. see what's going on. All right, cool. so we've got the center bearing apart. It's definitely seen better days. So, what's the verdict, Ben? Grease is all burnt. Got water in it potentially. The grease looks pretty um, trash. It's got metallic speckles. There's, there's plenty of metal particles in it, you can see there. The little metal bits in it. Uh, it also looks like it's had water in it before. You can see the circle around here is all red and rusty. Yeah. Uh, we know that seal at the back there's so not really doing anything, it's just sliding around, it's not sealed to the shaft. So um, just to get them through, we'll pull the joint out. 
and uh, flush it out, pack it with grease and put it back. Lucky I brought my circlip pliers. I saw that, but... I you don't even know why the fuck I brought them, but I thought, expecting. fuck it. This was a stitch up. You knew about this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right, so Ben's going to order some new stuff for us tomorrow through his supplier from work, hopefully. And we'll be changing all this stuff for good. Yeah. When we can. And see the rubbers in here. And we'll try. Yeah. So, right, for a center bearing, CV, and. Rear, um, rear yeah, uni. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. So take three. We took it back again. We had a was it a slight, slight rattle on yeah. higher speed and RPM decel. But we're definitely gonna have to get on to doing the tail shaft. So we're Next thinking, stop. I guess, because the ratio is different, the tail shaft not under load on decel as much. It's not so as it's, loaded. It's, yeah, it's got just a little bit of free play to to float around and rattle, so we'll see. We will. There's always something, but you know, now that it's in a higher, higher loaded diesel, yeah. it doesn't do it. Yeah. Like, it shouldn't do it now. It's only as you're going from yeah. diesel to diesel. It feels good. It's, no noise you can hear. So fourth gear now, cruising along at yeah. 60. So just go forth and then come off and forth. That's the tail shaft, right? Yeah. Well, all in all, it's pretty quiet, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's... Mate, what an experience. <laughs> it feels good, it's a lot more peppy. Yeah. And it's good, it still wants to come into boost. You feel it's the still got enough load. Yeah. If anything from the passenger seat, it feels quite reasonable. Yeah. So I reckon in your daily driving, stay out of that neutral, yeah, um, coasting sort of area for the sake of the drive shaft. The sake of but, embarrassing um, noises. Yeah. But um, just cruise around for a bit, get the oil up to temperature. Yeah. And then the gear set and everything. And then you know, make sure it's still okay, and then just start leaning into it a bit, loading. Turn around here in a second without having to gear down. Oh, Never would have been able to do that before. Yeah. It's much more suited to the car, isn't it? It is. Yeah, just the initial tip in response is yeah. so much better. So, third gear doing 60 k's an hour on the GPS, 2600, 2650. Oh, yeah, about 26. It seems much happier. Yeah, this is where it wants to be. Like you got enough to get up and going. But... Fuck, man. What's the time? It is 10.30. So it is 10.30 on Sunday. We started at... 9.30ish? 9 9.30, 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. After Didn't... finishing at 3.30 Saturday morning. You. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, went through all the way to 3 a.m. this morning. Went home, slept for four or five hours, come back, and now we're here now. You've seen the, the events unfold. It's been a real <laughs> of a day. <laughs> a little something. I guess it's a celebration. So I guess from this series of videos, we can basically now go on and create a new series of videos on how to refresh your tail shaft. <laughs> ben, thank you seriously so much. Yeah, um, as you saw, we've already repacked the bearing. It's a lot better. The rear uni is still really shit. That's where most of the clanging is coming from now, but yeah. Get ready to hit the streets again. Last words. Last Don't word. Don't do this if you're not in a machine shop with a lathe, surface grinder. Uh, I, think, I think the thing is that you never know what you might find. And uh, there's always a way to make it work. Yeah, it just takes time. <laughs> it just takes a lot of time. So don't rush. So. Uh, yeah, it just depends on you know what you want to do. and, and well, You know what, really, this may not happen to anyone else, but it's just been so unfortunate that well, yeah. the diff took so much work to get it shimmed right for the backlash and then it wasn't seated, so we had to come back and adjust it. Now that it's adjusted nicely, we've realised that the tail shaft and uni's fucked. So 
that's what happens. It is, the tail shaft probably is 300 and something thousand Ks old. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's a lot of custom work. And um, out of that, you learn some new things. And at the end of the day, it's a good result. Yeah. Really good result. All right, well, I've got to get up at five tomorrow. You might as well You're not go a bit to later. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> might as well not go to sleep. So we'll be back very soon to do the tail shaft, I think, before that explodes. And then we'll be moving on to the Forester. Fucking finally. We're going to bring that down here, do the drivetrain swap, hopefully fire it up. Ben will be doing the run-in tune, yeah. getting used to the new ECU labs, ECU and software, etc. So you'll be seeing plenty more of this guy, plenty more of me, of course. But I think it's, if there's one theme, it's drivetrain December. <laughs> And carnage. And carnage. <laughs> Alright, well. Catch you later. I'm going.